Adam Maripos Vox here, and I am working on a brand new OBS Studio tutorial course series uh, for the channel. I'm working on a full series to go through the entire software suite, start to finish all over again, and cover all the options. But they, they did just release version 18.0, and now 18.0.1, and added a ton of features. So for those of you who are already familiar with OBS, or maybe have already gone through my tutorial series before, I just wanted to do a quick update video. I will have the change notes, change log in the description below where you can go read about it yourself. Uh, but I did want to touch on some of the new features that may or may not have like a direct point in the tutorial where I can reference, hey, do all these things where it's just a couple specific things. So first and foremost, what I consider to be kind of the most important thing, as you see kind of a side view of me here, although it does, it is freezing up as I'm recording. I'm not sure why that's happening. Um, I don't think that's relevant to like your usage. I just tried opening up multiple OBS instances and it kind of has caused some hitches here. I haven't had this experience while actually streaming. You have a little side view here of my uh, stream view, but they've added in an automatic updater because they just released version 18.0.1 and after opening up version 18.0 and that release being or that version being released it gave me the option to update quickly downloaded it quickly downloaded wow a uh like a one megabyte update applied it and relaunched and it worked fine so that was really cool to see they've also now added audio monitoring to your audio sources You'll hear this mentioned by some of us pro streamers and things like that, uh, that you should always have a loopback from your microphone to your headphones so that you can hear yourself, as I do right now, um, and be able to, you know, adjust your vo your levels accordingly. But if you do not have a higher end audio system or something like that, you might not necessarily have the ability to do that inherently within your audio system like I can. So they've added in the ability, if you go into your audio mixer here, to audio monitor your microphone or even your desktop audio. Now this loops it back just to you and doesn't send it to the stream unless you have it set. Like so monitor only just sends it back to you. Monitor and output also loops it to the stream. So this is useful if you have a third party source. So this is something that a lot of people have been requested. So if you set up virtual audio cable and run audio to like an extra audio device and then you monitor it and you send it to output then suddenly both you and your audience can hear it with a basic tick but the best use for it is monitoring uh your microphone so now, so now i say that and now i get a huge echo, echo to me that you, that you should, should, should not be able to hear other than, other than the fact, fact that it's coming through my monitor speaker, speaker right, right now instead right of my headphones it goes, it goes through, through your default, default audio, audio device by default. default we're going to turn that off but if I go through here, so you probably heard that in my desktop sound. I'll leave that in for the effect. But if you go into the advanced settings and go to audio monitoring device, you can choose what it goes to. So for example, I'll sell it, set it to go to my headphones right here. Click apply. And now when I enable audio monitoring, I can enable it from my microphone, monitor and output. And now it's echoing to me through my headphones, monitor only, echoing to my headphones, but not through the actual recording. Super, super handy this is like a huge awesome feature that many people have been requesting and if you're creative creative enough you can adapt it to use with your uh skype recordings your music playback things like that and i will have some advanced videos on that in the future they've also added here a color source just for no reason so if you go to add source color source if you need a solid color like i say blue here then you can enter you can either select the color or enter the hex value. You have all the options that you would need to choose a solid color, you know, but for whatever reason, there's, there's a minute and then you can set resolution. So 1920, 1080, bam, full screen, ready to go. Just in case you need that for whatever reason. They do allow now a VST audio plugins for some audio effects. That's a very complicated topic that we'll get to in a future video. I don't really want to cover that right now. That's just, it's a dedicated video, but they have done that, and that's pretty big. They've also added, uh, when you start live streaming, a network stability indicator like was on the original OBS version. So it'll be green if your stream health is okay, red if it's not, which is super big for making sure that it's handling the bit rates and everything else appropriately, which is quite nice. 
Um, they've also added these separate timers here so that you can see how long you've been live streaming and recording separately, which is super handy if you're you know, recording and live streaming separately, which I do during my streams. I record separate things. They've added a LUT video filter, which is used in a lot of profession, um, professional video editing applications. It's called a video or a look up table, which essentially applies like color effects and color interpretation to your uh, video source. So here we have, if you go to the filters, go add, apply LUT, okay. Then you need an actual LUT file, which is a .png. Here I have, they have some pre uh, created ones or you can generate your own if you have specific programs for this again it's a complicated topic with a lot of extra programs required but this applies a t it makes the shadows more blue and the highlights more orange for like a cinematic movie effect whoa um, you can do a lot of cool color correction and things like that with your webcam or face cam if you need to i will whenever i set, set up my full formal camcorder i'm probably gonna mess around with that it's a more advanced topic but one that could be quite useful regardless lastly of the big topics that i'm going to tackle in this video is they have added a, a some a, some networking functionality so if you go into the advanced settings you can see enable new networking code and if you enable that you can enable low latency mode which is supposedly and then you can also make sure that it uses a specific network adapter on your computer if you have multiple, which can be useful if you're trying to manage multiple upstreams and downstreams to your computer, which for me and for like server broadcasting environments is super handy. Uh, but then low latency mode supposedly uh, minimizes network impact caused to other programs on the computer. So essentially it will make your stream not lag your game as much in theory, but it can also cause other problems. So that should be the first thing you disable if you're having stream up, you know, stream up bandwidth problems. But these are the main features added in in OBS Studio 18.0 and 18.0.1. They've added in some great features. And on the whole, it's been a great updated program to use so far. I've had a blast streaming with it lately and cool features. So I will have a full dedicated course coming soon with all the updated features and things like or with all updated tutorials and things like that covering all the features uh, i'm working on it it takes a while to produce but i am coming up with the 2017 version hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching smash the like button if you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one